Hello guys, Fuzz here and welcome back to our next Final Fantasy IX episode. So since we did the Chocobo hunting in the last episode, I've just spent some time here on this island killing a lot of the green dragons and have been levelling up some of my characters and learning new abilities. And since we got a lot of loot from doing those Chocobo uh, hunting locations, the Chocographs, I decided to go ahead and just spend some time on upgrading the party's abilities. I did it for most of the members and these are the four that I currently have in my group at the moment. Now there's a few other optional places we can do uh, before we crack on by heading to the Black Mage Village which is our next story destination of course. It's been a while since we uh, left the last part of the story so uh, it's I guess easy to forget about that but uh, there we go. So today we're going to be collecting some items. We're going to be visiting the auction house in Trino. We're going to be doing uh, more chocobo stuff, some secret chocobo stuff involving our new ocean chocobo. And then finally we're going to be doing some more frog catching. And depending on how long all that takes, maybe we'll crack on then uh, by carrying on with the main story. So first things first, uh, I said we're going to start collecting some items and let's go ahead and do that. So what we want to do is park the blue narcissus up just on the beach here south of Chocobo's forest and we're going to be grabbing our mountain, uh, excuse me, our ocean Chocobo or mountain Chocobo if that's all you've managed to attain thus far, the red one and head up to the gate area so we'll just turn this around you can use your guys or greens on the tracks, I've already just done so so Chocobo is, Choco is here ready to go and it's not this gate that we want we're just going to head up and over and we can see the gate up on the plains here we're going to head into there. Chaka wants to come with us, but he's just going to have to wait outside for a moment, I'm afraid. And the guards might try and have a go at us, but then they'll recognise we have a gate pass. And let us proceed. So we have been into this area before, but we couldn't access the chest previously. Now we can. The Mortina racket was also here before. And if you missed that the first time, then you can grab it now. So no harm done if you did. And next we're going to be heading over to the Evil Forest area. Okay, so once you've made your way to the Evil Forest up here, I've still kept the Blue Narcissus down at the beach at the south and just traversed across on our Chocobo. Uh, you'll reach the Evil Forest. You can't actually go into the forest because it's all petrified, uh, thanks to the story encounters that we had earlier on so we'll just run past Alexandria here up the mountain and across and we can run back down the other side that way we can traverse the lake and stream area and if we just head over this side of the stream then we'll come across the next south gate that we can actually access just here hidden out the way and this will also have just a couple of items for us to to pick up and there's a Moogle hiding as well so we'll say hello to him in a moment uh, nothing too exciting but a couple of elixirs are always good to add to the collection and a bit of uh, I think gill as well if I'm not mistaken there we go 3206 of the stuff to be precise and we'll just see what this little fella's doing hello Moogle so this is Moscow, and he's got nothing exciting for us at the minute, so if you want to save, you can do so on the world map anyway. Uh, but that's it in terms of extra items that we're going to be picking up for the time being. So next we're going to be heading over to... Uh, I forgot where I am now on the map. It's, uh, well, we're going to Trino. That's where we're going to go. So we'll sort it out, and I'll see you there in a few moments. There we go, look. We're actually close by, so... May as well do this journey now, hadn't we? At least that would make the most sense to me. And with our wonderful Chocobo here, look, we can just traverse this landscape like it was nothing at all. We. Anyway, when we get to Trina, we're going to go to the auction house. And here we are at the auction house. There's a couple of things that we're after, including a promised ring and thief gloves. They're the two things that we're really needing. So there's the thief gloves, we do want to get those. I'm not too concerned about the other items, so we'll let those go. But the uh, Thieves glove, uh, Gloves, which gives us the Master Thief ability, making stealing uh, much easier. You have a much higher chance, especially at those rare and semi-rare items that we're always trying to get from the bosses. Should just speed things up a little bit for us. So we'll get through these other auctions, and then we'll see what we can do about those gloves. So we're just going to try and win these Thieves Gloves now, and I've got them for 17,500 gil. 
So it's quite interesting. It's a bit of a, a nice auction this, and yet they are selling the thieves' gloves. But we'll go ahead and throw those onto Zidane here. Right, if I can buy them, if I can pass them. I suppose it would help if I looked under the correct uh, equipment slot. There we go, look. Thieves' gloves. And the master thief ability is what we're after there. Let's see if we can go ahead and throw that on. Yes, we can. Steal better items. Uh, basically what it does, because that's a little bit of a confusing description, it just increases your chances at the uh, specifically rare items that uh, mobs have in their uh, arsenal. So it's not like adding new items to their list uh, of stealing stuff, but you can just get them better, get them quicker rather. So we're not interested in the rat tail or the doga's artifact, but the promised ring we are surely after. And the reflector ring can be useful, but we've already got one, but it's up to you if you want to get another one from the auction house here. You will have to spend gil for it, of course. Okay, so I've managed to get that ring, and I did pick up the reflector ring as well, although uh, you may not want to do that. It wasn't too bad, though, on my pricing. So next, we're going to actually head back out of Trino and do some more Chocobo stuff. This time, we can only do this if we have the Ocean Chocobo, which I do have, but you may not. So by all means, you can go ahead and skip this and come back later if you don't yet have the Ocean Chocobo. But if you do have it, then it's going to pretty much be a nice little way of uh, topping up some decent items into our inventory. So we'll go ahead and crack on with it now. Okay, so we're going to be doing four dive spots, the first of which is located here. You can see where I am on the map. And no, not surprisingly, you, got, you are going to need to use a dead pepper item, which you get from Chocograph hunting, or, you know, when you do the hot or cold game uh, in Chocobo Forest and or in Chocobo Lagoon. So we're going to need four for today. I happen to have six in my inventory. We're going to go ahead and feed Choco here a dead pepper. There we find a treasure on the bottom of the ocean, including 10 remedies, a black robe, some Genji gloves, and a blue Narcissus card. So that's the first of four that we can reach today. And next we're going to head over to dive spot two. Next we're going to park up our Choco just outside of Quan's uh, dwelling here on the eastern side of the continent. And we're going to have to make our way through to the dock first and foremost. So once we head out to the actual dock area, we can access this field icon here, and there's something at the bottom of the ledge in the ocean, looks like foam apparently. So here is where we can use our dead pepper. You can also access this spot by the way directly on the map, but uh, by doing it this way using the field icon you don't waste a dead pepper if you get the wrong spot. So we'll go ahead and do this, see what happens. So here's where we can feed the dead pepper. And we go diving off from the edge here. And there we have it. That's the exact spot if you want to uh, do it by any other method. But once again, we get a nice selection of items there. And it nicely puts us back in the dwelling, so we're going to have to run all the way back out again. But I will see you at dive spot number three. Okay, so here's our next dive spot location. And just to clarify with these ocean uh, dive spots, they do have like a, a kind of bubbly animation on the actual spot, so you don't waste your pepper. We'll go ahead and feed Choco the next dead pepper and we'll see what it is we get. Actually, in all fairness, the rewards for this one are pretty useless. But we do need to get them in order to advance the side quests and whatnot. So I still recommend that you do it. Even though the rewards uh, won't be of any use to us at all. Right, so next we're going to be heading up to the right up to the northern section of the map. Let's speed things up a little bit uh, for the fourth and final dive spot. And it's right on the tip of the drawn out map on the interface here. So we'll slow things down. There we go, we can see the bubbles just there. So we'll once again use a dead pepper here. 
after this, we'll probably be discarding some of these items because we have a full stock of many of them anyway. Potions, high potions, ethers, and more appropriately, a nice batch of elixir as well. So not too shabby. And now we can just head out from up north to reach the boat, the blue narcissus down from the bottom. I do like this speed hack, if that's what you want to call it, just for traversing the world map just cuts out uh, a lot of unnecessary time doesn't it but uh, there we go so we have uh, all four dive spots that we can get at the moment and then finally we're just going to head over to do some more frog catching if there is frogs available of course and once again make sure you leave a male and a female and the golden frog so that they'll respawn faster if you didn't do the frog catching when I first suggested that you do so uh, after the last section of the story then they probably won't have respawned at this point if that's the case don't worry about it too much but I do recommend you try and get at least a bistro for, for Freya if you haven't got that already so just bear that in mind and it looks like we just can get two more of these with the stripes down which are the females and then we'll leave the rest here Some battle boots, not too shabby. Remember, the ultimate goal is to collect 99 of these frogs. So, just one of these two stripes at the end here is what we can get, and then I'll head over to some of the other marshes as well to see if we can, uh, or see if any of those have refilled. Okay, so now that we've done all the frog catching we can do for the time being and I've been to all three of the marshes I now have a grand total of 56 frogs if you've been following along with this walkthrough you may even have more or even less than that not to worry uh, either way these uh, influenced by a certain amount of randomness depending on what frogs you get and which ones you can catch and when the golden frog spawns etc uh, but either way you should be making a nice amount of progress towards that magic number of 99 which is what we are inevitably needing to reach so now we can finally make our way over to the black mage village and it has been a while since we needed to uh, do some story but now we do we've done pretty much everything we can do so we'll go ahead and grab the chocobo here to help us on our way uh, black mage village is just up here look you don't need a chocobo by the way to reach the Black Mage village, but I'm just not going to bother trying to find the path. Instead, I'll just get the Geishal Greens out, and Choco can do the work for us. He's good like that, you see. He's good like that. But there's the Black Mage village up there, but you can just uh, park on this beach here, look, a little bit further up from where we left the Blue Narcissus. So there's a couple of things we need to do here. We'll head in first. So we've got a bit of a scene. And it seems nobody's here. Where could they all be? Well, Beefy runs off. And back in control of Zidane. Uh, I'm going to first of all... Find something that I think I missed earlier. Have a look. It might not be here, but it is around a bed if that makes sense. Let's head down for now. I'm guessing it's in another room. Let's see what's through here. Ah, there we go. It's the Virgo Stellagia. I knew it was by a bed, uh, but it's the bed in the inn that we need to get to. So. I did miss this the last time when we made a visit to the Black Mage Village. Our first visit, in fact, uh, it becomes available, but I did forget to mention to grab that. Fortunately, the Stellazio are uh, always available, so we're not going to miss out on those. So I'll go ahead and grab that first of all, and then we'll, then we'll head back out to uh, crack things ahead. And to do that, we're going to head over to the cemetery area, which I believe is this way.
Right, well it sounds like we have our next destination in order. It's going to be the Chocobo Shack, which is right on the other side of the Black Mage Village. Not that it's a big place. Right, so now we know where we're heading to next, we can do exactly what Zidane told us to do, which was grab the ship and head over to the eastern side of the continent, or we can use a chocobo, and as long as you have a mountain and or a uh, ocean chocobo, which is what I have, then you'll be able to get there without the ship. 
but if you do need the ship then you can park on the southern side of where it is we're heading to which is basically a place with lots of sand well like sandy whirlpools and we're just at the Eiffel tree at the minute which isn't quite the correct location so I'll sort us out and be right back with, uh, back with you okay so this is where we actually need to be this kind of deserty area on the eastern part of the continent and you can see there's these four sinkholes here in the desert and three of them are emitting sand uh, we want to proceed into the one that isn't emitting sand so I believe it's different depending on well it's just random uh, to your game so just check whichever one isn't putting sand out and you'll be sorted first things we are going to do is just remove gear from everybody else since the party's going to get completely and utterly changed at this point so we'll keep Zidane equipped since we will be using him of course but I'm going to finish the episode off here guys so sorry it wasn't the longest one in the world but it does have a couple of hours of recording time for me which is why uh, once I've edited it down it might not appear to be that length but it really is so thanks guys for watching if you have enjoyed this and if it has been helpful to you remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel don't forget you can find these save games for my walkthrough on the First Finger Gaming website, link in the description and that could be helpful to you if you've lost your save game or if you're just trying to catch up to uh, where I am with all the optional stuff that I've completed. So thanks again guys and I'll see you soon for more Final Fantasy IX. Bye for now.